In this video, we're going to do a quick worked example of a question on upper and lower bounds. We're told a cup can hold 150ml to the nearest 5ml and a bottle holds 750ml of lemonade correct to two significant figures. Bob says he is certain he can fill five glasses with lemonade. In part A, we need to show that he's incorrect. And then in part B, we're told Jim says he only needs four cups filling. How much lemonade will definitely be left over? With any upper and lower bounds question, I like to draw a little table. You certainly don't have to, but it might help you out. So what we're going to have then is the cup and the lemonade. So let's put this here. So we'll have cup, or we could have now bottle. It's entirely up to us, cup and bottle. What we're looking for is a lower bound and an upper bound for each. With the lower and upper bounds, I like to use a little number line, which we'll do just here, and we'll do one for each. So what I'm going to have then, starting off with, is the cup. So we've got now 150 mil. This now is to the nearest 5 mil. So this whole length can be 5 mil. Therefore, I can go 2.5 to the left and 2.5 to the right. So this is going to give me 147.5 and 152.5. Anything in this interval will round to 150 mil correct to the nearest 5 mil. If we now consider the bottle, we've got 750, and this now is correct to two significant figures. The second significant figure is tens, so this whole dif uh, this distance here has got to be 10. So we can go five this way and five that way, so we'd have 745, and then we'd have 755. So we can see that now this is going to be five mil, this is going to be the 10 mil. So we can go that way by 2.5, this way by 2.5 and in this case now we can go that way by 5 and then this way by 5. So let's go ahead and put these in. So lower bound for the cup, so 147.5. If we now look at the upper bound, 152.5. If we look at the bottle, lower bound, 745, upper bound, 755. So what we want to do is show that Bob is incorrect. Now let's consider the scenario here. If he wants to fill as many as possible, he wants the cups to be as small as possible, and he wants the most amount of lemonade. So what we're going to look at is the worst case scenario for him. The worst case scenario is that he doesn't have a lot of lemonade and his cups are big. That means that he's not going to fill as many. So all we're going to do then is divide 745 by 152.5. So if we do that, we've got 745, that is the amount of lemonade, we're dividing now by 152.5. So let's go ahead and work that out on a calculator, and we need to show that this is going to be less than 5. So we've got 745, that's the worst case scenario now for the amount of lemonade he has. The worst case scenario is that his cups are the biggest they could possibly be. So we end up now with 4.885, let's just write this in. So we'll say that that's going to be 4.89, and that now is given to three significant figures. So that now is the number he can fill. So therefore, we can say now that 4.89 is going to be less than 5. So all we've done is gone ahead and done that. From, on the face of it, it looks like he could do it. 750 divided by 150 does give him 5. Now, if we looked at the best case scenario, we might have 755 million and the cups might be small. Now, if that was the case, what we clearly see is that 755 over now the 147.5 means that he's going to certainly fill more than 5. So we can see 5.11. Okay, Jim says he only needs 4 cups filling. How much lemonade will definitely be left over? So what we need to do again is use the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is that the cup is as big as possible and the amount of liquid is as small as possible. So all we're doing now is using this particular um, result that we found here. So if we just put that into a calculator, we've got now the 745, we've got the 745 over the 152.5. Now, he can definitely say, assuming he doesn't spill it, that there's going to be left over 88.5, and let's just put this in, we can say now 88.5 mil left. So 88.5 mil left, and that now is given correct, and that is going to be correct to three significant figures. 
So all we've done now is simply looked at the upper and lower bounds and decided which one to use in the given situation. So we looked at the worst case scenario and it might be a case that you have a question where you're looking at the best case scenario or just a range of different problems involving upper and lower bounds.